Hello everyone, welcome back. So today we have a very important story of international consequence. And that's the rumor going around that the dictator of North Korea, Kim Jong-un, is dead. Now, I'm going to just put it right there that these messages are coming from Japanese media and Hong Kong sources. And then when it comes to this kind of issue, you can't be completely trustworthy of those sources because there seems to be issues between those two countries, especially between Japan and North Korea. North Korea has been flying ballistic missiles over Japan for several months now. So they don't they are not exactly in good terms right now. So that's one thing you have to know. So there might be a reason for them to be able to spread uh, conspiracy theories around about the leader of North Korea. Now there are actual real reasons why people are suspicious that the guy may really really be dead. There are very very serious reasons about that because there have been reports that the guy has serious health challenges since the beginning of April. And some people are even thinking that maybe he already has the coronavirus or maybe no, no things like that. That that could be the reason. But that may not really be the reason. It could just be that the guy has serious health challenges because this guy is very very fat from the picture you can just see he's extremely fat and if you are fat unlike what people like to say in nigeria you just have to understand this being fat is a very serious health risk don't let anybody lie to you it's not about somebody trying to shame you it's not somebody trying to insult your life choice it's not about that it's completely unhealthy now you have the right to still choose to remain large there's no there's no question about that but you just have to realize that this thing has consequences people that are fat are completely predisposed towards things that are very dangerous like heart attacks towards things like diabetes towards different diseases like that that you are more likely to get those diseases or to develop those complications if you are fat than if you are not so just put that in mind and this guy smokes a lot so he has so many lifestyle choices that are not really really helpful to him so it can be very very uh, clear why he might be in a serious condition right now so that that one is not a problem but again i'm just going to make this clear to everyone right now for those people who are wondering that who the heck is kim jong-un now the reason why this matters and the reason why i'm picking up this news is because this guy is very very important when it comes to the world stage back in 2017 he got into a serious back and forth with donald trump where the two of them being very volatile were complaining and yelling at each other complaining about how they could actually destroy each other destroy each other's nations and how they could drain nuclear weapons on each other so you have to understand that this country has nuclear weapons kim jong-un has nuclear weapons by estimate he has from anywhere from 60 to 120 nuclear warheads and for those people who don't really understand what nuclear weapons is it's not some nonsense things that some people talk about saying that it's it's maybe it's just the air that if you breathe in the air that's absolute nonsense if a nuclear bomb is detonated in the city it's going to level everything out like it's going to level everything like destroy everything buildings are going to be leveled to the ground to the ground everything is going to be destroyed you have to understand it's not about something you are breathing it's not just some gas it's, it's not a gas weapon or whatever you have to understand that it's is a weapon of mass destruction so it's terribly dangerous so you just have to pay attention to that that was exactly what the united states used on japan in order to end the world war ii they dropped the first one that they nicknamed little boy in hiroshima that one leveled the entire town of Hiroshima, killing 70,000 people. 70,000 people on impact. That is when the thing detonated, boom, like that. 70,000 people were killed. Some people were destroyed so much that you could not even find their bodies. Like you could just see the shadow of their body burning into the, into the cement around the place. So it was a very, very dangerous weapon. And then they detonated the next one. Three days later, they called that one Fat Man over Nagasaki. When that one detonated, about 40,000 people were destroyed on impact. By the time you have add everything together with radiation sickness 
and you know long-term issues that came around with it over 250,000 people got killed by just two bombs just two bombs not 250 people 250,000 people that's one quarter of a million souls perished from just two weapons so these things are very very dangerous and that was just back then in 1945 nuclear weapons are far much more developed than that today a lot more developed much more dangerous and they can be delivered to any part of the world by different means now and kim jong-un has already perfected one of those means and that's using intercontinental ballistic missiles that's icbms so he has perfected that in 2017 and that's one of the reasons why he was competing with trump back then trying to make sure everybody would recognize him as a nuclear power at least he recognizes his nation as a nuclear bearing power and it's a form of deterrence so that nobody is going to try to mess with your nation because north korea is living under serious threats and least living under the serious fear that the united states might invade them any day anytime and that stems from the korean war during the korean war what happened was that the grandfather of kim jong-un that was kim il-sung decided to invade the southern part of the korean peninsula because the southern part of the korean peninsula was occupied by the united states after the war ended and after they pushed out the japanese that were the aggressors in that region the soviet union from the north took over the northern part and they established a system of government there that was socialism in the northern part where americans established capitalism in the southern part now these two systems are very opposed to each other and those two ideological differences were the things that caused the northern part and southern part of Korea to disintegrate and for them to completely split apart. So no, none of those two parts wanted to submit to the other part. The southern part didn't want to submit to socialism or communism, which is another form of socialism. And the northern part didn't want to submit to what? To capitalism. But the two of them actually wanted to unite the nation because it was just a nation. It was Korea before. There was nothing like South Korea before, it was just Korea, not North, not South. So you have to understand that, it's just like, let's say that, okay, Nigeria is even too big. Let's look for another nation, let's say France now, that everybody is French. And then you have Northern France and Southern France. Or let's say a country like Sudan, not like you have Sudan and then Southern Sudan. And imagine if every one of them are ethnic, ethnically the same, exactly the same set of people, and the only difference is just political ideology so that's exactly the kind of calamity that befell korea and split them into north and south so that was exactly what happened then kim il sung the grandfather of kim jong-un decided that was going to unify the nation so he decided to invade the southern part by invading the southern part the united states being the protector of the southern part then decided that they were going to supply weapons and supply military sort of help toward the southern part in order to repel the northern invaders before you knew the united states started sending military effort towards that place and they later even sent their soldiers towards korea then and that was actually what led to the korean war from 1950 to 1953 so the korean war really really involved the united states and the soviet union but they didn't fight each other it was what they called proxy war it was more like they were fighting in another person's land so they were actually fighting in korea it was the ideologies the ideology of those two countries that were fighting but the people that were doing the dying were the koreans but of course this was caused by kim il-sung who invaded the south you have to understand that but after the war ended in 1953 nothing really happened it was still the same border that they had over the 38th parallel that's the 38th line on the on the latitude so that's exactly where everything still ended up even despite the fact that so many people lost their lives nothing really changed at the end of the war so that was where they signed the armistice that was ceasefire so there was no real uh sort of agreement that okay well, let us end this war it was not like like an an, an official end to the war so that was actually what is making that was actually what made north koreans which of course have been having very bad economy because of socialism because socialism is a very terrible economic system and they have because again another thing there is that 
they have a very very strict authoritarian regime so it has been a very terrible system for them the people live in hunger the people live in starvation and the place is just a very horrible place that's in north korea while the south is flourishing under capitalism that's one of the reasons why one of the most popular phone products here samsung is from south korea so many other products are from south korea so south korea is flourishing while north korea is what is languishing in hunger and in poverty and whatever little amount of money they have the kim family keeps spending it on what on weapons in order to defend themselves and of course the way the north korean place is made is such that the kim family are seen almost as godlike image so the country is basically is basically atheist country so they don't believe in god for the most part but the only people that they necessarily need to respect are the members of the kim family starting from kim il sung himself and of course the son of kim il sung is kim jong il took over in the 1990s he died in the end of the 20 in the end of the i think 20 2009 2011 that was when he died and then his son which of course is the grandson of Kim Il Sung, the original revolutionary now, is Kim Jong Un. Now, that's the reason why this thing is very important. Kim Jong Un has been following the, has been pursuing his nuclear weapons program like relentlessly. Different administrations have tried to fight him over it, or have tried at least to pacify him over it. Every way possible, the guy is not letting up. So that's, that's, you have to understand that is the issue on ground. And of course, North Korea is not a nation you can trust. It's a rogue nation. Again, they violate the human rights of their citizens. We, are, we all complain that the human rights of citizens in Nigeria have been violated. You don't know anything about that if you are a citizen of North Korea. You are being monitored day and night. Everything, you are, like, everything is just so horrible over in North Korea. You cannot complain towards anyone. Like everything is just so, 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 so tough over in North Korea. People live in starvation, people live in hunger. So many people in North Korea always try to escape into South Korea. If you are caught trying to escape over the demilitarized zone into South Korea, you will be shot, you'll be killed by your own people. That's the kind of situation there is. And that's how you're just going to understand that it's not like maybe North Korea is perfect. If North Korea is such a great place, people wouldn't be trying to escape into South. People don't try to escape into the North Korea part from the southern part because southern part is flourishing that south korea is flourishing it's only people in the northern part that are suffering that are trying to escape into the southern part but they are never allowed to suffer are ever allowed to escape they want them to keep working the farms over in north korea so that there will still be a little bit of food there so that they won't all starve to death so that's the situation so it's a very terrible country again very, very terrible country and that's the country that this guy is presiding over while whatever little amount of money they have, he keeps using it to build ballistic missiles so that he can flex his muscles on the world stage. So that's the kind of thing there is about it. Again, I mentioned that back in 2017, he nearly plunged the war, plunged the world into a sort of nuclear war by challenging Trump and challenging the United States and threatening the United States that he was going to launch missiles into the United States. That was an act of war. So that was what he was doing. So the guy was actually challenging the most powerful nation in the world, talking about military. It does not even come close. The United States spent $800 billion on their military every single year. The closest country to that is China, spending $250 billion every year. The next country to them is Saudi Arabia spending about 90 billion dollars every year so no country even comes close to the United States the second country when it comes to spending so the only country the second country when it comes to spending on the military spends only about one over four that's one quarter of what the United States spends on its military per year so it doesn't even come near the United States has about 11 different aircraft carriers even russia has just only one so it's it, like it's extremely powerful and then north korea was doing all that so what if the united states had tried to retaliate 
we could have plunged the entire world into a nuclear apocalypse in 2017. So many people didn't know about that. So I just want to allow you to understand that this guy was a very dangerous, dangerous guy. So that's the kind of person he is. And that's one of the reasons why we really need to do what, know what is going on with him. Because if he dies, there's going to be serious humanitarian problem in North Korea. Many people are going to become refugees in North Korea and are going to immigrate into, into their neighbor, that's, that's China. If China becomes destabilized, it's going to become a serious problem in the south, southern part of Asia. And it's going to become a serious, serious problem for the entire world. Imagine what China is causing right now with the coronavirus. And then imagine if a whole bunch of people troop into China and then mess up China even much more. So that's just the situation on ground. And then you also have to understand that it could actually lead to a war. What if North Korean leaders decide that, okay, well, this guy was killed by the US military? Or if they decide that this guy was killed by the southern part, that's the South Koreans, maybe through some stealth work or whatever like that, and then they decide to retaliate. On the border between North Korea and South Korea, there are about 60,000, like 60,000 artilleries, big guns there, pointing towards Seoul. That's the capital of South Korea, ready to be shot towards Seoul at any point in time. So even without using nuclear weapons, and of course North Korea has nuclear weapons, even without using nuclear weapons, they could destroy Seoul in, in, in a matter of minutes. Even before 30 minutes, they could waste millions of lives in South Korea in a matter of minutes because they are very close to each other. And do you think the United States is going to sit around if that happens? The United States is going to bomb the crap out of North Korea. And that is going to start a serious, serious war. So that's the situation. And if the United States attacks North Korea, China is not going to sit around quietly. So that's the situation there. Another thing that's also making North Korea very dangerous is that they sell nuclear weapons technology to rogue nations like themselves. Like Iran. Iran is a state sponsor of terrorism. A country that, st that sponsors terrorism. North Korea sells nuclear weapons technology to them. So it's a very dangerous thing. Just imagine, we are talking about terrorism now. They are using IEDs, that's improvised explosive devices, using C4s, using TNTs, and just regular detonation devices right now. Now imagine if they have access to nuclear bombs. Imagine if Al-Qaeda has access to nuclear bombs. Imagine if ISIS had access to nuclear bombs. Imagine the sort of devastation they would cause to the planet. Remember the number of refugees that had to flee from Syria, from Iraq, from different parts of the Middle East because of the problem of ISIS. They caused so much problem in Lebanon, they caused so much problem in Yemen, they caused like, so much problem everywhere in the Middle East. Now imagine if they had nuclear weapons. Imagine if Hamas in Gaza had nuclear weapons. I mean, just think about all those things. So that's the sort of danger that North Korea is posing. And that's one of the reasons why countries that are in the organization for the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons are complaining that North Korea must not be allowed to fully buff up its nuclear weapons capabilities. Because North Korea is like, it's like a bomb waiting to explode when it comes to nuclear weapons technology. They have no restraints. They are very crazy. They have crazy leaders. We don't care about anything that's the situation anyways i'm still going to be explaining a whole lot more on this sort of issues there's so many things about history i'm going to be, i think i'm going to be adding this as part of the regular series i'm going to be talking about history talking about all those things happening from world war one world war two so that we can understand from the perspective of the world stage in africa we can understand what is happening it's not just all about Obasan John and the rest of them. We have to understand what is happening on the world stage for regular Nigerians. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. It's really going to help the channel to grow. Thank you for everyone that subscribed. And thank you for everyone that's watching. I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Bye.